Today I have five rustic and farmhouse fall DIYs. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Alright, number one is going to be a window cling sign. I got mine from Walmart last year on clearance, but you can get yours anywhere. This is just a Dollar Tree sign. It's a rectangle sign. And then I got some of this wallpaper from Dollar Tree. This is fairly new, I think. It is to my store anyway. I love the way that it looks. We're going to make this sign over. So I'm just start off by taking that string out of there. You can save it to use again. And then I'm just going to try to line up where those planks are to where the plank is on my sign. can just use a clip to hold it in place. I'm going to trace it out with a pencil on the back side and then cut that out. You can use your scissors or a rotary cutter or whatever you have, whatever works for you. And it's going to line up just right. Okay. That'll work. Now I'm going to remove the backing. It comes off very easily. And then just like a puzzle, I'm going to fit that right on the top of it carefully, press it down, flip it over, press it down again. And I'm going to use my little wallpaper tool here to smooth it out. That was easier than using craft paper and a glue stick love this stuff then i'm just going to take a piece of sandpaper and just go around the edges to give it a nice clean finish this just happens to be from my my hand sander but it was nearby so i went ahead and used it works great so doesn't that look like it was supposed to be on there it's perfect now i'm going to take this beautiful two pumpkins and I'm going to use my glue, my little glue stick, and I didn't want to mess up my tabletop so I'm just doing this on the back of the, of the cling paper and I'm just going to run that glue stick all over the back, all around the edges so that I can put this down on my sign. And I'm just going to center it by eye. Press it down with my hands. I always press them from the center outward so you can press any bubbles out that might be there. And then I'm just going to use this little tool again to press it all down. Now I'm going to give you some options. You can use one of these little signs and glue it down if you would like. You can get those at Dollar Tree. You can also use any type of a wall sticker from Dollar Tree. This is a piece I had left. You can go ahead and add a bow here if you would like. And this is a very simple bow for you. Crossing it over, pinching it in the middle, tie it off, and then you could just use some hot glue and glue it down. Easy bow. You can put it on the side, you can put it on the top. Or you can just not put anything else on there at this point. I am going to distress the edges of my paper just a little bit, or that wallpaper. And I'm just putting this on a damp piece of fabric that I have. I'm just putting this antiquing wax on here. And I got a little dot on there, but that's okay. I'm going to use my little Dollar Tree brush and pat some of that out. And then I'm just going to go along on the edges of my board. Just going to kind of lay it down and then in a minute we'll be blending it in a little bit and you won't see all those rough lines it'll just give it more of a rustic look and i think this will be a cute little farmhouse piece so i'm just going to take a dry paper towel here and just kind of in a circular motion rub this in around the edges of the sign it's very subtle you can also add this on the insides a little bit like I'm doing here whatever look you're going for 
Then I'm using the same hanger and I'm putting it on the, on the top and using a little bit of paper to glue that down. Next, I'm gonna take some of these acorns and just add those up in the little corners. Same thing here, you're gonna take your glue stick, put that on and just put, I just wanted to put mine up into, into the corners. Same process, smoothing it down. Now you can go over the top of this if you want to with some Mod Podge. What do you think about this? Project number one. Okay, number two is a chalkboard sign. I'm using copper because I am loving copper and I have been for the past two years. But since I'm going a little more in the cottage core direction in my home, I'm going to add a little more copper this year. This is some beautiful ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree last year. And I thrifted these little leaves with the copper on them, but you could just get the little chipboard leaves and paint them copper if you would like, however you wanna do yours. I'm just taking the two, putting them in the corners, and then I'm gonna make a little, a little riser or a spacer out of this scrap piece of wood on the back of the bigger leaf so that it'll give it some dimension and it will stand up from that sign. A little glue here, and I'm just gonna place it down. These leaves are beautiful. I love this, I love the effect. And it's very rustic. Okay, so now with this gorgeous ribbon, I'm gonna use my rotary cutter and I've just got a little piece of a sign here so that I don't cut my table. And I'm gonna show you two options for a banner. We're gonna start the first one off just cutting triangles just like this. And you can have a little pennant with triangles and then I'll show you one other way. I'm just gonna go down here and cut these pieces out. However many pieces is going to be depending on the word that you choose to put on yours. I'm gonna use fall so I'm really only gonna need four. I have a jar of scrap jute and string. I'm just gonna choose a piece that's long enough protect my fingers because this part you will get burned if you don't. That edge is a wire edge, so it gets really hot on your ribbon. Be very careful. Press it down, of course with the wrong finger, you know, because that's what I do here on my channel. And I turn it over and press it down. Gonna do the same thing for each one of those until I get enough on there to go across the top of my sign. And this is how it will look if you decide to use the little triangles. You would just use a little glue and just glue that down. Here's the other option. Same ribbon. And we're going to use, I'm just using my little cutter here. And I'm going to do one and a half inch slices. I'll only need four. I always do an extra or two just in case I mess something up. So I'm only going to need the four for fall. Cut those out. I love this little cutter, it's perfect. And I have already cut one edge of that wire off, of the wire ribbon, so that it's loose. You can see here that piece is gone and I'm cutting up to that next little section. So it's like a brown, then an orange, then a beige, and I'm just cutting up toward the next row. That way all my pennants are the same size. Now, you can use this type. and the four will fit perfectly across the top so that I can spell fall. And I like that one a little bit better for this project. Now we're gonna make our little hanger. I'm gonna use a little bit of glue and just put this piece of jute around the top. And then you can start deciding where you want to put your pieces. There's just a couple of little frayed areas. I'm cleaning that up. I want this to look high end. So with a little hot glue, I'm gonna start on the outsides first and just glue that piece of wired edge right down onto the jute. For all four of the pieces. 
Be very careful that you don't burn your fingers because this stuff is really hot underneath that wire edge. Okay, now I thrifted these, but you can use stickers or whatever you have to spell out fall. These are little copper, they almost look like coins, and they are metal. And I thought they would look beautiful on the sign for that rustic look. But first, I've got to fill in the space between the fabric and the board. So we're going to use these little pieces of adhesive foam and just stack them together. Now you can use glue dots, you can use, I know Dollar Tree has something like this. Mine came from the thrift store, but you can get them from um, Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to make it where it's almost as tall as the, the thickness of my frame so that it will stand out. If you use a lightweight sticker, you might not need to do this, but these coins or these little pieces of metal are a little heavy. Um, and don't worry, you can see through that sheer ribbon, but you won't see it after we get those down. And when you put your sticker on, if you use a sticker, you won't see it either. Just going to use a little hot glue. Again, be careful when you're using metal and hot glue. It gets really, really hot. And then do that for each one of these. So which of the banners would you have used? This one or the triangle? Give me a thumbs up if you like number two. All right, moving on to number three, which is going to be a versatile pumpkin sign that you can use two ways. This came from Dollar Tree, and I'm using this sandpaper here. And it is a very rough sandpaper, and that's what you want because you want to, when you spray paint this, you want to be sure that it is going to hold onto that shiny plastic. So you want to rough your surface up. I'm going in all of those little cracks and everything. Wipe it off, then take your copper spray, take it into a well ventilated area, protect your surface, and spray it down. I gave it two coats and let it dry in the sun. Then I'm going to use a little palette that I got from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to take some antiquing wax. This is going to be the base, but I want to color my base. So I'm using a baby wipe and some of my antiquing wax. I am just rubbing that together and I'm going to start applying it to this palette. I'm going to rub it in in all the spaces in between on the slats on the bottom. We're going to go around back and do all of this too because you, again, we're striving for high-end looks, we need to be sure that everything is well thought out and completed. So that's what we're doing here. All right, set it aside, let it dry. Once it is dry, we are going to apply this pumpkin to our palette sign. And you can see here in that center groove, the pumpkin will fit. It'll sit down in there. Now it won't stay on its own, so you're gonna have to take a good bit of a strong glue. You might even wanna use some E6000 or something like that um, in here too. Glue that down. You're gonna need to hold it and then add some glue and some popsicle sticks, or I took the tops of some scrap paint stirrer sticks that I had to go across there and to hold it down. So you want it to go across the bottom of the pumpkin and onto the palette. This is gonna give it a really strong hold. This has stayed in place and I have not had any problems. I've had it for a week now and it is still going strong over there. So now you've got a freestanding copper pumpkin sign. Another way you can use this as, is as a planter. You're gonna take whatever color greenery that you want Put it in a little vase or a jar on the back side. You'll never see it, so it doesn't matter. Start filling it in, fluffing it out, and then now you have, look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's another farmhouse piece for you. Do you like this project? Number three. Follow me on social media. Farmhouse pumpkin number four. Okay, this one came from Walmart originally, and I got it at 
of course, the thrift store. I'm gonna start by removing everything off of here. Look at the staple in this thing. I thought it was glued and I was getting weak, but then once I pulled it out, look at the size of the staple. Wow, it was not going out by itself. Okay, then I'm going to remove these signs because I can use these words again. So if I'm gentle with them, I can use them again and don't break them. Taking out the nails, taking off the words, popping those little metal flowers off as well. Got to be real careful. Now I'm going to take a rough grit sandpaper, take off the glitter, all the glitter, and then I'm going to go over those holes where the where the nails were and the other hardware. Look at my little, this is how I clean my table off, y'all. It's so cute. Okay, then we're gonna use some tissue paper from Dollar Tree. And I just absolutely love all of those pieces. We're gonna take that chalk paint, shake it up real good. It's thick, so I don't have to worry about covering those holes ahead of time. That is not gonna be a problem. Gonna start laying on that chalk paint to get us a nice, smooth, opaque surface for when we lay that sheer tissue paper on top of it. You're just gonna go around the whole entire top of that pumpkin just like that. I'm trying to avoid to get paint in those cracks. I really don't wanna try to get it in there. But if you do, once it is dried like this, take an emery board, it'll fit right down in the cracks and just saw it back and forth. It's gonna help get that nice and clean for you. You can also go over it with a marker or a pencil. Okay. So, in order to put our tissue paper on, we're going to be using some Mod Podge. I'm going to squirt some on here, squirt some on here and here. I'm going to use a damp paintbrush and I'm just gonna start brushing this on all around the edges, the corners, the little slat grooves, everything. Get all the way up on the stem. Everything that is going to have tissue on it needs to be covered in Mod Podge. Sometimes it's unavoidable when you miss a spot, but you can go fix it like I'm gonna show you how I have to fix it. Okay, we're gonna place it down very gently and start pressing down from the inside outward. You can pick that paper up if you're very careful, press it out. Now, if you miss a spot, just go back over like I'm doing here and press it back down. Oh, this is beautiful. I love this paper. It's so farmhouse. Once it's dry, take your sanding block and very carefully, so you don't tear anything, just start sanding downward and away from your pumpkin, just like this. And it's gonna shear those edges off and make a perfect, almost like it was factory made that way. Look at that, can you believe the difference between this pumpkin and the other? Craziness. Okay, I'm gonna take my rotary tool, go right down those grooves, and just make a little slice. And we're gonna go back over with some more Mod Podge. This time I'm using about a teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons of water with a little bit of that Mod Podge. It's gonna be very thin. And I'm gonna take a flat brush and start putting that on the top. This is gonna seal that beautiful paper in. and keep that nice and secure for you so nothing comes off. Now you're gonna go around all your edges just like I'm showing you here and then right in the groove. That's why you got that brush like that. You see how thin that tip of that brush is? Go right in that groove, watch it darken up. Look at that. Now it looks like it was painted on. Isn't that wonderful? What a cool trick. Okay. So there she is. And now we gotta let this pumpkin go dry. Don't worry if you get wrinkles in it. If you, you know, that's not a big deal. Once it's dry, we're gonna start doing a little embellishment for it. And I wanna start by making a lace bow for the top. This is kind of shabby chic, I think, but it's also farmhouse. So you decide, what would you call it? All right, I'm gonna cut, you know, you can do six to eight pieces of whatever type of 
lace ribbon you have or whatever ribbon you have if you don't want to use lace you can certainly try something else that will match but since i'm keeping it farmhouse neutral i went with the white and i'm using some white ribbon to tie it so i put it in an x pattern i'm pinching it up in the middle and then i'm going to add my ribbon on and tie it down if you have some other type of white jute or white cord, you can certainly use that if you don't have this ribbon. Whatever you need to use. We're all about saving money here, so we try to be versatile. And once the bow is made and tied securely, we're gonna start just dovetailing those ends. On every one. You can do a slant, you can do whatever you like to the ends of these bows. You can leave them square if you would like. I've just found that they look a little bit nicer and more finished if you do a little something extra, something intentional. So I'm just fluffing and twisting around here. And then I'm gonna get my hot glue, put it in the center. And I'm going to put that right up there at the base of the stem. At this point, you could call it done if you would like. Make sure if you're fluffing that you're holding it down while you're fluffing so you don't pull it out of the place and make a mess with all that glue. Okay. But I wanted to do extra, of course. So I am going to take some of this um, greenery. And since it's the same greenery that you can see in the, the pattern here, I thought it would be pretty and appropriate. So I'm just gonna add that with a little bit of hot glue. Don't overdo it with the hot glue if you're planning on repurposing your items. Just do what you need to do without going overboard because it's easier to clean up and remove later if you wanna repurpose. And you can always save that greenery for some other project as well. I'm just doing what feels right. Put just a couple of pieces here, a couple pieces there. You can cut your things, use a wire cutter. If it's, you know, really strong, you don't want to ruin your scissors, but get in there and, and do what you want to do with it. You bought it, make it, make it your own. Okay, so what do you think? Would you have left the bow without putting the greenery or, or what? Do you like this one? Okay, final project, and this is my favorite. I saved it for last. This is the calendar sign. This is from a package of calendars last year. They do have this in the calendars if you're fortunate enough to find them this year, but I think the background is white. This sign that's on top of here uh, also came from the Dollar Tree. This was in the summer collection. You're just gonna trace that out, cut it out, and then this will fit right on top of that faux wood round. That's what we're gonna call it, a faux wood round. Sounds fancy. Have y'all been able to find the new calendars? Because I have not. I don't know what's going on. Okay, glue stick. You know me and my glue sticks. I'm gonna go over this project thoroughly, and then I'm going to lay this down on top. Then start pressing it out from the center outward in all directions, and then use my wallpaper smoother to press it down. Okay, take your sandpaper, same thing, go around your edges with your sandpaper, and just shear off those edges to make a nice smooth finish. Then we're going to have to have something to attach this down to that little flat basket or paper plate holder or whatever you wanna call that thing. I got it from the thrift store, so I really don't know what it was originally intended for. We're gonna put down our pieces of wire with a little bit of paper so that we can put this on and have a good, good grip. We don't want anything falling apart. So here we go, I've let the glue dry, and now I'm just lifting those pieces of pipe cleaners up so that I can press it through this little 
piece of whatever. Wicker, is this wicker? Cane, I'm not sure what it is. We're gonna call it a basket. How about that? It's a basket. Then you're just going to twist it down and push it down. Twist and push it down. You wanna lay it flat because you wanna protect your surface when you hang it up. Okay, it already looks fantastic, right? You could leave it just like this. You could go to Dollar Tree and get a $1 pick that's already put together for you. How simple is that? I'm taking a pipe cleaner, but you can certainly use wire or you can use jute, whatever you wanna use. And just go ahead and secure this down to that basket right in the top center. All right, flip it over, turn that little knobby piece up so it's out of the way. We don't wanna see that in the front. And then clip it off. The next thing we're gonna do is work on a little bow. This is the same bow that I showed you earlier. I'm showing the same bow in a lot of projects because it seems to be the most easy one for people to understand and replicate. And it's such a simple bow. When you're doing a style that's not real fancy or glamorous, it really does fit into a lot of your decor pieces. All right, so I'm dovetailing the ends. Um, by the way, I have about a foot and a half of this plaid. This came from Dollar Tree. It's not as good a quality as the orange that you're going to see me cut next. This one is some fantastic ribbon. I should have gotten a lot of more of this. And this is leftovers from last year, by the way. I haven't found the new ribbon this year. I'm going to fold it over and dovetail it. Look how thick this stuff is. This is nice. Very nice ribbon. So I'm going to loop them over like this, hold it in the center, and then pinch it down. Simple. Use whatever bow technique you like, whatever type of bow you want to do. I'm showing you a simple version to make life a little bit easier. I'm going to do the same thing with the plaid. We want to stack them on top of each other. And I'm going to take a little piece of jute scrap that I have. And I'm going to tie it down. Do y'all save your jute too? I save stuff. I save the little hangers that come off of things. I save all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I do. I think that's kind of common for crafters though. All right, you're gonna at least want a double knot in there because you don't want it to come apart when you are trying to fluff it out. And once you get it like you like it, go ahead and take the extra ends of that jute, thread it through the back of that basket, and just tie it right securely on there. and trim off the extra pieces. Now we're gonna get the bow fixed right. We're gonna curl the little tails under, cut them shorter if you like. I don't want them to be in the way of my words, so I do trim them in a bit, but I don't think that is in the video. And then to keep these letters where you can see my words, I'm just gonna take a little hot glue and then gently rub the leaves into place. This is also a good way to make your picks look a little more high-end when you're using them in signs and in um, other pieces of decor where they're kind of laying against something as you can stretch them out. You know, you get them at Dollar Tree, they've been stuffed in a box. They're kind of, some of them look kind of sad. And you see my sunflowers kind of, kind of sad looking there. We're gonna fix that and we're gonna fix that greenery so it stands out and it looks nice and crisp taking some hot glue and putting it down either on the sign or next to that wicker basket. We're just pressing that down. It's making everything stand apart and stand out. Little drops of glue, stretching it over, pressing it down. You see how the leaves now will stand out a little bit more? That looks more high end, just in my humble opinion. And also, my flower looks kind of sad, so I'm just gonna take a pencil and my fingers with a little hot glue just put those layers together so that the top layer will pull upwards on the bottom layer and make it look 
a lot more together. That's a major improvement, right? Yeah. So now we're gonna do just a little something on the bottom. I'm gonna take about six inches of this orange and I'm gonna do five inches of the black and white. I'm just gonna dovetail it and then lay it down. I'm gonna do them both. Then I'm gonna use some hot glue to attach them together on the bottoms. This is why you want one to be shorter than the other. Put the longer one in the back. This way we can see both layers. And I'm just trying to get an idea of how I want these to be splayed out or displayed. And I think I wanna put them right under the edge. Now this will be sandwiched between the basket and the back of the sign. So I don't wanna damage my basket. I'm gonna glue this down to the back of that sign. And there you go, press it down. Then I'm gonna take some of this bittersweet that came from Dollar Tree. I've just pulled those off the branches. I'm gonna add a little hot glue and then here and there, I'm gonna add the bittersweet, it's so pretty. And just pop those little bits of fall all over the sign. I'm gonna add some to the top as well. until I get the look that I am going for. Just kind of putting them in a triangle shape there. And this is how it looks. One more piece is needed on the bottom, I think, just to elongate just a little bit, even it out right between those layers. What do you think about project number five? Which one is your favorite? Let's run back over all of the projects and you can tell me which one you like best because I'm really interested to know. Okay, so here's that pumpkin with the greenery. And then I will show you what it looks like if it's standing alone. Here is our farmhouse pumpkin. And those look really good together, I think. You can see how they're displayed. And then here is our rustic goodies. There's the chalkboard sign, the calendar sign, and the window cling sign. I'd love to know your opinion. What's your favorite? Did you enjoy this video? And are you working on your fall crafts yet? Thank you so much for watching and for all of your support. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.